to endure. I, I, I'm pushed. I've seen so many celebrities start opening up more about their hair loss and about hair issues and the anxiety and depression and mental health that can go along with it. And as a woman who started going bald in my 30s and was not expecting this, I've been struggling with hair loss and sharing that journey for the past three or four years here online, I never expected it to be as emotional and distressing as it actually ended up being. And thankfully there are things that I've done that are helping, including getting regular blood work, just to see if my plant-based diet has anything to to do with it and thankfully multiple doctors and dietitians have told me that no my nutrition is fine and my hair loss personally looks to be a form of alopecia not just telogen effluvium and we're going to talk about what all of that is as well as what people like lily reinhardt have had to go through and what some other celebrities have had to go through including one of my favorite internet plastic surgeons dr gary linkov and how he had a type of alopecia called alopecia universalis where his entire body stopped growing hair but then it just spontaneously started to grow back. And especially seeing as there are over-the-counter options as well as prescription options, these things give me hope. But growing up with acne and being someone who's personally breaking out right now, I felt really underrepresented in media. I didn't watch a lot of TV or movies, but when I saw magazines and media, I never saw acne-prone skin represented in it. And even as I got older, in the movies or the media I did see, acne wasn't there. And hair loss, especially in women, definitely was not portrayed in that media. And I feel like that representation is important for so many different groups, but also for different skin conditions, for different hair conditions, and for different medical conditions. And that's something that, honestly, it's kind of why this YouTube channel exists, to educate, entertain, and empower others, but also to see ourselves reflected in the media we consume, which is also why I am so impressed by Lily Reinhardt opening up about OCD, depression, and what it's done to her hair, as well as some of these other celebrities. So we're gonna watch this. I I, I'm pushed uh, beyond limits of what uh, a, a person um, should should be should be pushed to to uh, to endure. I, I, I'm and I appreciate that she's opening up about this. She's using a very fancy hair regrowth LED, maybe laser device. I can't tell which one this is, but obviously she's sitting underneath it. And what's not shown in like this TikTok trend is the context behind this, that she started struggling with panic attacks by like age 11 or age 12. As someone who had panic attacks literally while I was driving a car because I thought the person in the car next to me was looking at my skin. Ah, the mental health! Again, sometimes it is all mental, not helping. And she's opened up about depression and anxiety and the horrible things that she's had to go through. And I'm even guilty of looking at celebrities and thinking, oh my gosh, they must have it all put together, right? Because that's what they post and portray on social media. But I think seeing some of these moments behind the scenes or seeing what has actually happened to her hair is so important because yes, this happens to women and we don't have to judge ourselves for it. There are things we can do about it if we want to, but this isn't a moral failure. This is often something completely out of our control. Sometimes it's genetic, especially if people in your family have had hair loss. Other times it's random and the body is rebelling against itself. There's literally multiple forms of alopecia, and this is literally an autoimmune condition where the body just says, Nope, not gonna have it. And then there's telogen effluvium, which is this rapid shedding of the hair after a stressful period of time, such as pregnancy. But often people look at this and they're like, her diet must be terrible, or she's using the wrong shampoo. But this is not a moral failure. And it's so refreshing to see Lily open up about this and see that she's doing something about it and she's talking about it. That helps to normalize it for the rest of us. And in a, in a way it's kind of validating to me because it's like, hey, even as I'm treating my hair loss and even as it's getting better, I still have my down days, right? I still have my breakouts. I still ugh, I get the feels and I don't like the feels sometimes, right? But it reminds me that I'm not alone. And sometimes just actually seeing that instead of just being told that we're not alone is really, really impactful. I also love that she's using this LED device. Does anyone know exactly which one this is? This looks to be one of those that like you actually sit in a chair and I can't tell if she's doing this at home or if she's in some sort of a scalp clinic. Now I have seen trichologists, which are hair doctors. And as you know, I've also seen and worked with dermatologists and doctors who have looked at my hair. But this is what's been recommended to me from dermatologists online, like Dr. Dre, who I love and adore, but also from actual dermatologists in my real life who are amazing and beautiful. And you need to check them out. I'll make sure that they're listed in the description as well 
well as in like a pinned comment below. But this is specifically my version of what Lily is using. This right here is the Iris Store helmet and the second I take it off my head, it's gonna stop lighting up because it's a safety mechanism. But this is low level laser therapy and LED. There's tons of medical data behind LED being used for the face. We know that it stimulates collagen. We know that it can help with the production of those strong tensile fibers and skin resilience, but we also know that it can be anti-inflammatory. And there's new information about eye health and how red LED therapy might actually be beneficial for the eyes. But again, don't go shooting LED into your eyes. We still need eye protection. Whereas for hair and specifically for hair regrowth, it's been studied time and time again and used medically in clinic. This little device is my saving grace. I've spoken about this so many times. And remember it used to be the white one. The white one is what I started using three years ago. And it was great, but I had to use it like three times a week for almost 30 minutes. This is one that I do for 12 minutes every day or when I'm filming a YouTube video, sometimes I do it twice in a row. I'm not gonna lie. This is the Elite, which is absolutely fantastic, but the white one worked really well for me too. I think it just depends on your personal habits or the person who's using this, how they prefer to do it. For me, it's easier to stick to something if I make it a habit every day, like this 12 minutes a day, rather than doing this white one three times a week. And when I did upgrade, I was kind of questioning whether or not I should because this worked so well, but thankfully the little battery pack that allows me to walk around, I can actually swap it out and use it on both of these so I don't have to go get a new one and I feel like I'm not wasting as much. The main difference is that this has 500 diodes and it has different wavelengths than this one. Again, both are a solid choice. This one is less expensive. As you can see, mine has gotten a little scuffed up because I literally travel with this because I can't do without it. This has made monumental difference in my hair and I actually am so glad that I've spoken about this online for so long because I have these before and after photos where you can actually track the progress of my hair. And the low level laser therapy from the Iris Store, again, either this one, the Elite or the White One Professional, the way it works is literally by stimulating your hair follicles. It's different than the LED you put on your face because it's low level laser therapy and it's much, much, much more intense. It's the right wavelength at the right power. And as you can see, it's right up against the scalp and they have the safety mechanism. So when you take it off, it stops flashing because it doesn't want you to flash it in the eyes. Ah, all right, take care of my health, fine. <laughs> now, while this is the thing that I've been using for the longest, it's definitely not the only thing. I've spoken about taking a Nutrafol supplement. I've taken the Iris Store gummies before. I've tried different hair serums and um, I'm actually about to try a couple of things like maybe even microneedling my scalp, which could be a disaster, but you know what? I'm desperate, so don't do it. And uh, maybe I will. <laughs> but overall, just looking back at my before and after photos, even though my hair loss is still a thing, <laughs> this has literally transformed my hair and my life. And I'm so grateful to Dr. Dre, the YouTube dermatologist who originally spoke about this and got me hooked on it. And I'm grateful to iRestore for actually making a product that works so well. And then actually caring about customers by like creating a battery pack that you can swap out. Or if the little pads on the inside of the helmet don't fit your head, they will literally send you the pads free of charge to make sure that the helmet fits snugly on whatever size and shape of your head it is. And that just matters so much to me as a consumer because I'm like, I want companies that genuinely care about me and I want companies that understand what I'm going through. And at iRestore, they work with experts and they have people that work there who have struggled with hair loss. And it actually quite shockingly feels like they do get it. And that's really unusual from a lot of beauty companies out there. I guess they're technically a technology company, but Anyways, I wish I knew what Lily was using. I don't know how expensive that is. I will say this is a pretty penny, like this cost rent. <laughs> but for me, especially using this for over three years and not having it die out on me or have any issues with it, it was totally worth it. But you can always find these on sale. I think they're actually having a Memorial Day sale. I'll make sure that it's linked below and that there's like a little coupon code here. Just make sure that if you are struggling with hair loss that you know three things. Number one, you're not alone. Number two, there are over the counter things just like this you can do. And number three, you do need to get a diagnosis even if you are treating it over the counter, which is what a lot of doctors actually recommend. They start with over the counter treatment and then sometimes they move on to like a corticosteroid, but you need to get a diagnosis to make sure that your alopecia is alopecia or your telogen effluvium is telogen effluvium and not like scarring alopecia. Scarring alopecia is a form of hair loss where the hair actually falls out, but it scars at the scalp and then new hairs can't grow where that scar is. It's a very uh, detrimental form of hair loss and that's something that you want to see with a dermatologist you want to catch early and get your blood work done. I get my blood work done regularly just to make sure that my nutrition is not negatively impacting my body. My A1C, my hemoglobin levels, like my cholesterol. I just have to say not to toot my own horn, but like it's really good. <laughs> 
eat more veggies. Just eat the veggies. <laughs> now Lily's not the only person who's shown her hair loss struggle, what she's been through and what she's doing about it. There are actually other celebrities and other people online that I personally love who've spoken about this. And Dr. Gary Linkov is a great example. Again, his type of alopecia, his type of hair loss is universalis, meaning he lost it all over his entire body. It was like that for years for him. Remember, this is an autoimmune condition. It's not something that's caused by wearing hats or negative hygiene or even your diet. A lot of people attribute it to those things, but sometimes it's the body just attacking itself and it just happens. And that's what happened to Dr. Gary. And he thought that he was going to be, you know, hairless all over his body for like the rest of his life. And shockingly, his hair just started growing back one day. That was just really, really exciting for me. And honestly, for me, it's because of the internet that I started to realize that I was really struggling with hair loss. I knew that I was having what I thought was telogen effluvium because I could kind of pull at my hair and like some would come out, especially during like really stressful periods of time, which is normal with telogen effluvium. However, when I look back at like videos and photos, um, there was like a Trader Joe's haul that I did a few years ago and people commented and they were like, do you have a bald patch in the back of your head? And when I look at that, yeah, that looks like alopecia areata, basically these circular patches of hair that just fall out. But yeah, it's thanks to the internet that I originally found out about my alopecia, my bald patches, um, and started to look into it. And I'm so, so glad that the internet pointed it out and that I am public about these things. I am making it other people's business. But there are other celebrities who have as well. Viola Davis has actually spoken about wearing wigs to hide her alopecia areata that started when she was just 28 years old. Even Ashley Tisdale, who we've reacted to on this channel, I didn't know that she was struggling with hair loss. She opened up about alopecia flares that happen around stressful events, actually starting in her early 20s. Not to mention Jada Pinkett Smith, who we've also reacted to her skincare routine, who just wears her hair completely shaved and she looks great doing it. And she's actually spoken about struggling with hair loss and alopecia as well. Also, we can't forget Tyra Banks, who not only went through hair loss, but actually decided to address rumors and comments that were swirling around her online and literally showed up wearing a bald cap just to show the world that you can look great with or without hair and you can embrace your hair or the lack of it and still look and feel fantastic. And again, these are the types of things that I wish that I had for acne when I was growing up. And now that I do have hair loss and I'm a little bit more secure in myself as I'm going through this, I'm just so happy that other people in the public eye are opening up about this because no Nobody is immune from the feelings of depression or anxiety and stress. And again, it's a misconception that just stress causes alopecia and hair loss. If that were the case, then everyone who was stressed would get hair loss, which is not the case, right? But for people who are struggling with hair loss, it's literally so emotional. Like this is like part of your identity. This is your look. This is what you wake up and see in the mirror every day. And if one day that just dramatically starts to change, you have these bald patches, especially if people point them out, that can be really, uh, really upsetting, especially if you don't have the tools or resources to deal with it. Most doctors and derms literally recommend over-the-counter products plus counseling, and then they move to prescriptions like a corticosteroid. Talk to your dermatologist, talk to an expert first. And remember that having that support network, having someone that you can talk to about this, understanding how it's impacting you psychologically is so important. Like don't isolate yourself. I did that because when I had acne, I would cover my face with pounds of makeup. I wouldn't even walk upstairs to have breakfast with my family because I felt like I was so ugly that I was a burden to them. How damaging was that? Don't isolate yourself. Talk about it and reach out for support. And for me, part of that is actually sharing what is and isn't working for me on the internet. And if someone else can learn from my experiences or the expert advice that I get from doctors and derms and trichologists and what I'm using and what actually work and what f***ing doesn't because I've spoken about what f***ing doesn't, that'd be amazing. And if you are struggling and you feel like you can't open up to anyone in your life, please find a friend in the comments. <laughs> I literally found Dr. Dre's reviews of these iRestore helmets that helped me so much. And Dr. Gary Linkov, like seeing him go through his struggle of whole body hair loss was so empowering. Not to mention, like, let's just be honest. I'm a girl who just loves testing things. I love testing, trying and buying new things specifically so that you don't have to and seeing whether or not they work. This is one of my favorites. I think it's 20% off for Memorial Day and you also get like free gummies, which are vegan. They don't have gelatin in them. I will leave all of that in the description as well as in a comment below. But even if it's not the iRestore hair helmet, there are some hair serums that I'm testing or this rotating scalp doohickey thing that I love. Not to mention, oh my God, you've seen my trips to Korea. These 
head spas, like these hair clinics. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to find some local to me in California, or actually in Arizona or in New York. If anyone has suggestions on which ones to go to, please, 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 please tell me because I'm trying to find some here that are more accessible. And if you haven't seen the videos that I've done about getting an 11 step hair loss treatment and you would not believe how much or how little this cost, are you subscribed? Did you hit all? <laughs> like this is unreal, okay? And again, a huge thank you to Lily for opening up about her hair loss and her OCD and her anxiety. That's huge to admit, but it is very reassuring to people like me who also struggle with some of these things like panic attacks. And of course, a huge thanks to Iris Store for not only partnering with us on videos, but for providing something that actually works. Please, actually, if you're comfortable doing it, post a comment with your hair loss story. Especially if you're one of those people that like watches and never comments, post a comment. I would love to hear about your hair loss journey. Or if you've never dealt with hair loss, lucky. I'm so glad you made it to this point in the video. Tell me why you watched, but I'm so happy you did. <laughs> Anyways, always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. Remember that your hair or your blemishes or anything else does not define you. It is one tiny piece of the beautiful, amazing mosaic of things that make up a you. Please remember that. And please know how many amazing talents and gifts you have to share with this world that have nothing to do with what you look like. Which is of course what be beautiful both inside and out means. So I love you and I can't wait to see you both in the comments and in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.